Today, we have Mr. Abdullah Alafi here. He is a member of the Presidential Council in Libya. He and the other two members of the Presidential Council are the head of state of Libya. Excellency, we've spoken to several experts about the situation in Libya. They've described for us the manifestations of instability. How would you describe instability in Libya and why this political problems have led to conflict and the lack of transition to elections? Referring to the political crisis in Libya and the divisions that began in 2014, there was a political split that occurred in that year. Subsequently, a dialogue was held that resulted in the Sakrat Agreement producing a unified executive authority in December 2015. One of the main demands of this dialogue was the need for elections to be held within a year, by 2016. However, our local partners in the eastern region did not accept this executive authority. The division between the east and the west continued, with the two separate governments. The situation was exacerbated by the large-scale war on Tripoli in 2019. Unfortunately, the outbreak of this war was caused by a lack of agreement between the political parties and the failure of the election project. The international community's intervention led to a ceasefire and the launch of the Berlin 1 and 2 processes, which supported the political process in Libya. Our international partners played a significant role in achieving a ceasefire and calling for renewed dialogue among local parties. That dialogue concluded in Geneva, producing a new executive authority that differed from the Sakrat Agreement. This new authority consisted of a presidential council representing the presidency of Libya from three regions and an executive government to provide services. The most important outcome of the Geneva Dialogue was the focus on the need for elections to be held on December 24, 2021. The United Nations mission, the participating Libyan parties in the political process, and the international community all emphasized the importance of holding these elections. The executive authority began working, and the prime minister's government won the confidence of the parliament for the first time with the majority of 135 out of the 137 members in an official session. Unfortunately, this government faced disagreements between the government and the parliament, and it was not given a general budget or the necessary requirements to carry out its duties. Thus, all the dialogues that took place, whether in the Sakrat or Geneva, unfortunately reached agreements with the international community to reduce executive authorities. However, the important work of holding elections could not be agreed upon and accomplished, despite the agreement on the executive authority. It is clear that there are controversial issues that could not be reconciled. The legislative authority, the parliament, and the State Council were given the responsibility to agree on the laws to issue regarding the constitutional basis for the election project. However, this has not been achieved to date. In all our meetings with ambassadors and the United Nations mission, whether with Mr. Kubis or Ms. Stephanie, the focus was on the success of the election project. It was necessary to ask the parliament and the state to reform the legislation giving the Electoral Commission the necessary time to prepare and organize the practical arrangements. Unfortunately, the Libyan people were disappointed by the failure to hold elections by December 24, 2021, and they were unable to go to the polls to elect their president. Additionally, I would like to hear about your work since March of 2021 and taking the office in the Presidential Council. What have been your priorities and what have you been focusing on? I had presented an initiative in October 2021 stating that elections would not take place unless there was consensus between the political parties and those competing for power, which was confirmed in my initiative when it was presented in the media. Despite being attacked by some local parties and also international parties that claimed I was hindering the elections, it was my responsibility to address the Libyan people and speak candidly that the elections would not take place in 2021 under these circumstances. My initiative includes two paths and a complete roadmap to reach the elections. The first path is to give the House of Representatives and the state the opportunity for a specific period of time to succeed in the constitutional basis and the laws for the elections. The second path is if the House of Representatives and the state fail to issue these legislations within the given time, then the Presidential Council will issue them by a decree of the head of state. At the beginning of 2022, 
Ms. Stephanie launched an initiative to give the House of Representatives and the state a chance. The committees were formed by the House of Representatives and the state at the beginning of 2020 and held meetings in Cairo three times after that, followed by a final meeting between the heads of the House of Representatives and the state. But unfortunately, these meetings were unable to reach an agreement on the fundamental issues that could not be resolved. What further complicated the situation in February was the appointment or election of a new government by the House of Representatives, which increased the division among Libyans. Now we need to address the main reason for the failure of the electoral project, which in my opinion is the lack of trust between Libyans. If we agree that we need to restore trust on three levels, this is what we have emphasized since the beginning of my responsibility for the file of the reconciliation project, which I shared with my colleagues, Mr. Kuni and Mohamed al Manafi. And what we have reviewed through the meetings we held with local parties at the legislative level, as well as with academics, experts, and state institutions, we found that a reconciliation dialogue project must be launched. We have started where the previous parties stopped in the National Reconciliation Project. In the past, the reason for the failure of national interest was the lack of a written plan. And now, Libyans have drafted a unified plan for the strategic vision of national reconciliation. This plan was prepared by Libyan experts, and there was also a significant role played by the state institutions, such as the Center for Law at Benghazi University and the National Planning Council. These institutions worked to ensure a large group of Libyan experts, and they played a major role in developing this vision. Given the nature of the disputed issues and the severe obstacles that have presented agreement among Libyans and failure of elections, despite 11 years having passed, the vision has emerged. Among these disputed issues, there are both old and recurring issues, as well as new issues. It is necessary for all parties to sit down and engage in comprehensive dialogue to address the fundamental issues of dispute and discuss them courageously and genuinely until a satisfactory consensus is reached. These disputed issues vary in importance and weight, and some of them cannot be resolved and integrated into a successful political project without being discussed and finding solutions. How do you see this important work on national reconciliation linking into the announcement of the Special Representative of the Secretary General for the UN on the high-level panel for elections and his work and his plan to get to elections and move past this period of deadlock? For the first time, thanks to the envoy of the United Nations, there are two tracks available in case the House of Representatives and the State Council fail to form a high committee or team to discuss disputed issues and address them before the set deadline. As the Presidential Council, my colleagues including A.M. Al-Manifi and Al-Kuni and I will work hard to assess Mr. Abdullah and his initiative, which with the help of our international partners will hopefully lead to its success. This comes after Mr. Boutili's statement at the press conference in which he clarified his vision, which was of great interest to all Libyans regarding the success of this initiative. I urge Mr. Boutili to first support the six-member committee from both the House of Representatives and the State Council, giving them a final opportunity to reach agreement on the laws and regulations related to the electoral process. In case of failure, the team that will be formed will discuss the disputed issues. This is of great interest to the Presidential Council and Mr. Boutili, and was hurried to reach agreement on these disputed issues. If the House of Representatives and the State Council fail to reach an agreement, this team will produce the results. In my opinion, the political process project now involves two stages, a short and a long term. The long term project is the National Reconciliation Project. We know that this is a long term project that begins with agreement by all parties, but it takes years to achieve and complete. It identifies the real reasons for the conflict and provides solutions to them. The short term is the electoral project, which requires serious action and sincere international cooperation based on changing the conflict model from a zero-sum equation to a political process in which everyone wins and everyone is considered a winner. This can be summarized in an initiative to hold a dialogue between power competitors. This is the main reason for the failure of elections. There is no trust among the competing parties and this trust must be established. You must focus on the principle of providing guarantees and incentives to all parties. We know that elections must be a winning party, but the situation in Libya is entirely different because some parties are afraid of the success of other parties. 
Therefore, we must focus on the existence of an initiative that ensures the participation of all and guarantees the acceptance of the results by everyone. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.